In 1675, Antoine van Leeuwenhoek was actually given the honorary title of the father of microbiology. Anton van Leeuwenhoek was coined the father of microbiology because he observed the first motile, motile meaning mobile or able to move around, so the first motile microscopic organisms. He called these organisms animacules. animacules. He gathered these animacules from a drop of pond water that he had collected. Van Leeuwenhoek also discovered the first bacteria. Cells had already been discovered by Hook, but those were plant cells. Animal cells and bacteria cells were discovered by Van Leeuwenhoek. Before this time, microorganisms were hypothesized, but never actually observed. Many people were resistant to the idea that something could exist that was actually too small to be seen with the naked eye. It was not until the invention of the microscope that this micro world was able to be observed. Early microscopes did not have much magnifying power until 1675 when Anton van Leeuwenhoek developed the first microscopic lenses powerful enough to observe these microorganisms. These improvements resulted in a magnification of up to 300x. Louis Pasteur was known for creating a lot of different things, including our pasteurization processes that we still use today. Louis Pasteur performed a series of experiments that presented overwhelming evidence against the theory of spontaneous generation. Many consider Louis Pasteur's experiments to be the death blow to the theory of spontaneous generation. So first, some background. The controversy at the time was how microorganisms were able to grow in broth. Broth is a nutrient medium that has nutrients that microorganisms need to live. Broth had already been developed and they had been using this to grow microorganisms in labs. It had been observed already that microbes were able to grow in nutrient-rich broth, but there was a debate as to why or how this occurred. Louis Pasteur postulated that microbes grew in broth because broth was exposed to microbes existing in the air, too small to be seen with the naked eye. These microbes would get into the broth from the air and then reproduce over a few days, growing enough to be seen. The other idea was in line with the theory of spontaneous generation. This idea was that the microbial growth observed in the broth after sitting out on the counter for a few days was due to something that was called the pneuma or the vital force. The pneuma or vital force was like this spiritual force in the air that was able to cause spontaneous generation. So basically, these microorganisms were able to spontaneously generate out of the broth. In order to put these two different hypotheses to the test, Louis Pasteur created the swan necked flask. The swan necked flask was designed to allow air through, or the pneuma or vital heat through, but it would actually trap any microorganisms. Here we see a diagram of the experiment. At the beginning of the experiment, broth was boiled to make sure that there were no microorganisms existing in the broth at the beginning of the experiment. Then, the swan neck flasks with broth were incubated for a few days. Pneuma, or vital heat, had access to the broth during this incubation period. But any microorganisms that would be in the air would not have access to the broth. After the incubation was done, they found no microbes, no microorganisms. The vital heat and pneuma was able to get through, but no microbes. So when they repeated the experiment, but this time they broke off the swan neck portion of this swan neck flask. These organisms that you couldn't see that were just hypothesized to be in the air now did have access to the broth. 
and they waited three days for the incubation and lo and behold there was growth in the broth and um, so the microorganisms did grow and the microorganisms were found at the end of the incubation. Pasteur swan neck experiments disproved the theory of spontaneous generation and gave overwhelming evidence that microorganisms exist.